Hey y'all. So I am back. Happy Monday. It is December 26th and we have officially gotten through the Christmas holiday. Okay, because I be over it. <laughs> like, it probably sounds horrible, but I definitely be over the Christmas holiday. I'm not in the Christmas spirit. So I'm usually happy when it's over. I feel like if we can get through to the 26th, then I'm successful. Even though it's just another day, but that's just how I feel. So we are here. Uh, my name is Ray. How are you guys doing? How was your Christmas holiday? I am back again. Um, I honestly thought that I was going to come back a lot sooner than I did. But remember, I told you guys that I was taking some time off of work for the holiday. And so I have literally just been enjoying my time off. Um, as I got closer to the holiday, I had a couple of brunches and a couple of holiday dinners that I went to, which was cool. And so I wanted to kind of film and pick up, but I'm not super experienced with the whole filming and the get readies and all that kind of stuff. And so I didn't do that. I just didn't want to be late, which I could have because one of those holiday dinners that I wanted to film, everybody was like an hour and a half late. I definitely had time to do something, but um, that's neither here nor there. So I kind of just waited and then we got closer to the holiday holiday and everybody was just getting ready you know for Christmas and stuff like that so I just kind of waited I took some time off from the gym um, I took some time to just relax and to sleep and it's so funny because I feel like I have slept so much during this break I normally don't sleep that much but I feel like I've slept so much definitely a lot later than I needed to uh, or that I normally do not never needed to clearly my body was like girl you need to so that's what I've been doing and then I finally got up and went to the gym today, uh, this morning, which was really nice. And just took some time to thank God, to think, to talk, to uh, not meditate, but just to like pray and to really just think about a few things. And then I was like, you know what? I'm in good spirits, so let me come back and kind of do a part two um, of the whole move into Atlanta, etc. First, though, before I get started and get into the story, I wanted to thank you guys for just engaging. You know, I am new to YouTube. I have not posted a ton of videos and I have recently started to repost and trying to get back like on my game. And the engagement from this last video was just amazing to me. I know it's not thousands or hundreds of thousands like a lot of your favorite and my favorite YouTubers, but the engagement has been pretty good and it went up pretty quickly. So I was very happy to see that the comments and the engagement with the ladies that were in the video comments was very nice I appreciate that I appreciate you guys just listening watching engaging with me and for also like just helping me understand that I was not tripping with my nail shop experience I am gonna give Michelle in this nail shop one more time I'm gonna give one more time and if for some reason um, it just doesn't go right I will be somewhere else for sure i've been checking out a couple of different places so i definitely will be doing something else somewhere else in the near future if this experience is not what i need to be one of the things that i learned early on in atlanta is that it's oversaturated with everything beauty and everything fun so there's plenty of nail shops hair shops makeup artists all that kind of stuff and i don't do the whole makeup thing or the hair thing i do my hair myself but as far as like the nail shops and stuff like that i can always get a different experience somewhere else because there are a multitude of salons nail salons and all that kind of stuff so i'm really just trying to get a good nail spot uh, a good experience something respectable not with all the extra and so let's just hope that michelle does what she needs to do it's not really michelle though i guess it was the nail shop in total but let's just hope that it's good this time around and if for some reason it's not i do have a place that i want to check out um it's not as close to my home but it's not super far so i'll try it out and kind of see you know what my thoughts are so thank you ladies for that i appreciate it um but i hope that you guys had a good christmas you know we're getting into the new year so what are your guys' plans i've been trying to think about what i might want to do um i have so many clothes so many shoes and bags that i have not worn yet that i don't really need to shop for anything for new year's eve should i decide to go to dinner or to um to go out you know with some friends i haven't decided yet though quite honestly I just really want to be in a peaceful space, um, not doing anything too crazy. I do want to go out to dinner though. I have reservations for dinner. I've made those reservations a long time ago, so we'll see if I do that. But like as far as the aftermath, I'm not really sure what I want to do. Like I kind of just want to chill. I'm not with the, all the rah-rah and the extra shit. So we're going to see, you know, 
how that plays out. We really only got a few more days. So we'll see how that all comes to pass. But tell me what you guys plan on doing for the new year. I promised myself um, next year, I will be doing something out of the state that I live for New Year and for Christmas, for sure. I just have to start planning early. So remind me uh, and keep me accountable <laughs> because it's something definitely that I want to do. I just want to have a different experience and I don't need to be, you know, in the club. I would love to be somewhere tropical. Um, if you guys have been in Atlanta, you know, over the holiday, you notice that the temperatures have been freezing. Definitely abnormal. Atlanta does get cold though, but definitely abnormally cold. Like when weather hit nine degrees I literally went out to my car and my car is parked in a parking garage I went out to the parking garage and literally my nostrils were on fire like no exaggeration they were on fire it was just that cold but it was sunny um, it was a funny experience I'm glad it's kind of over right now I think it's close to 30 degrees and so it's definitely better than what it has been and I believe by like Wednesday or Thursday it's going to be in the 60s so everyone all around the globe has been experiencing some frigid you know weather but hopefully things clear and if people do plan on getting out for the new year holiday then you know they'll be able to do so or be able to travel because a lot of flights got canceled um they'll be able to travel to their destination so we'll see how that goes for everyone anyway um getting back into part two of the movie and i think that i ended up um talking about how i look for places and how i look for schools for my boys and then i ended up moving and it not being anything i didn't move to any of the places that i had searched when i came back to atlanta but i did find a good place to live right in the city which i'm glad that i moved to the city because commuting in atlanta you know can be hard i come from seattle there's definitely a lot of traffic and long commutes but i find that for whatever reason atlanta is just a little bit more different um it could take you 30 minutes to get five miles down the street literally no exaggeration so the the weather and the or not the weather the traffic and the congestion here is just a little bit different so i'm glad i didn't move further out because the city was was definitely <laughs> where i needed to be um i ended up coming out here and moving you know in the city and i loved it um, coming from Seattle where the cost of living is a lot more expensive I was able to move to the city because the prices at that time were pretty comparable I paid the exact same amount for my place in Seattle as I was live as I was paying to live in my place in um, in Atlanta lived right in the city had a nice home everything was walkable to me my boys were going to a really good school and so it worked out one thing that I will say for those of you who are interested in moving to Georgia specifically and just out of your normal state, I don't know, you know, what the criteria is when you need to give notice to move into an apartment. But in Washington state, you only need a 30 day notice if you're going to move out, you know, and move into a new home, 30 days notice. In the state of Georgia, it's a 60 day notice. And so I had to put in my notice in March just so that I can move in May and my move date was May 18th to be exact. And so be prepared for that because I, I saw myself that it's different from state to state. The next thing is just the cost of moving, you know, alone. When I first was going to um, relocate, I figured it just would be easier and more cost efficient for me to take all of my items um, in Seattle and move them to Georgia. And at the time I had this three bed or three story, two bedroom, was it two bedroom? I think so. It was a three story, two bedroom townhome in um, Brenton, which is a little city right outside of Seattle. And when I priced everything to move and to transport all of my items from Seattle to Georgia, it was a little over $10,000. And people warned me against doing that because of a few reasons. Number one, Texas is like the main hub when it comes to transporting items. And so my pack or my shipment would have first had to go from Seattle to Texas and then from Texas to Georgia. And so there was going to be a little delay there. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is when it comes to these moving companies and they're transporting you from state to state, um, they only give you the depreciated value if items are lost or broken or stolen. And so say for instance, I had a bed that cost a thousand dollars and it got damaged on the way here, but I had the bed for two years. Well, if it originally cost me, you know, a thousand dollars and I had it for two years, the new depreciated value is going to be $800 for instance. And then if it gets broken or something like that, 
they're only going to give me a portion of that $800, which is even gonna cover the cost of me being able to buy the item all over again. And so it just really wasn't efficient for me to do that. So what I did was I put all of my items on OfferUp and I put all of my items on Craigslist in advance because I wasn't really sure how long it was gonna take for me to sell all of my stuff in my home. So I put it on there and um, I left literally one TV that was mounted in the living room above the fireplace and I left a mattress. Sold the box springs, the headboards, my dining room set, my like literally everything. I sold everything and I just kept those few items because I figured once we were getting ready to, you know, get, sell everything, I didn't want us to sleep on the floor. That stuff sold in like two weeks two weeks and so for about a month or maybe a little over a month my boys and i were literally had one tv and a mattress that we all had our own mattress that we slept in the living room and i remember one day my youngest son was like mommy let's say his name was brandon brandon's here can you come inside and play and i was like we look homeless he cannot come inside and play because we are sitting here on a mattress he ain't about to go home and tell his mama that we're broke and poor hell no y'all can play outside i remember that but kids are so damn innocent they don't be knowing um but that was kind of my experience and so when i did move to atlanta my move date was may 18th 2016 and i moved here with just the few suitcases that i bought with me on the way here and then i packed my car with everything that i wanted to ship because it would be cheaper so i want to say the cost to ship my car may have been around 800 dollars or something like that maybe 900 and then you have a capacity like a weight capacity of what your car will weigh and how much it should take but a friend of mine told me well you can just pack the car like the trunk and the inside of the car and they'll give you like an overweight fee which is like another hundred dollars still cheaper than having to ship boxes of clothes and pots and things like that and so I remember when it was time to pack my car I literally packed my trunk with the one TV that was mounted above the fireplace and I figured it might not transport well but I would at least want to try to transport it to see if it will work versus buying a whole new TV again and it worked still have the TV to this day and um, I packed it with clothes and pots and like little memorabilia that I did not want to get rid of because they meant a lot to me and literally I had packed that car so tight that when the guy came to put the car on the truck he could barely sit in the front seat um <laughs> because the car was packed so tight but at the end of the day i think they only charged me like a hundred dollars or a little bit over that because it was overweight and it still was a lot more affordable than you know transporting everything on its own so it ended up working out i'm grateful for that and i literally started all over so beds couches pots pans forks irons whatever you can think of i literally had to start from scratch and it was just a good experience and so quite honestly now i feel like if i had to do it all over again i could do it all over again with two kids i could move to africa and make it happen because i've made it happen before and that was a big stepping stone for me um, I think I mentioned before, but if not, I'll, I'll mention it now that I've never lived outside of Georgia or outside of Washington State as an adult. So my only experience really has been living in Seattle, Washington. And now I've come to Georgia and there's so many different things that I've learned. There's so many different ways I've grown and elevated and just these different experiences that I haven't that I have had in Georgia that I would have never had if I would have stayed in Seattle. And so I definitely encourage everybody who has an interest to just move, make the move, make the move. For so long, you know, I was just thinking that it wasn't my time or that I wasn't supposed to do it or I was waiting for the right time and the right job and the right amount of money. And it's like, no, I would be waiting for forever if I would have kept that mindset. Pray about it and if God wants you to move, he will make it happen and it will be all good and it will probably be one of the best experiences that you have had. And if not, and if it doesn't work out for one reason or the other, um, at least you know that you tried it and it didn't work versus having a, a case of a shoulda, woulda, coulda. It's like, I wonder what my life would have been like if I should have done this. What if I, no, you don't want that. You want to get out there and explore and try something different. And at this point in my life, I definitely am ready to move somewhere else. I have been in Georgia almost seven years. It will make seven years, May 2023. And the time has flown by. And I could honestly say that 
you know, had I not moved here, I would have not had simple experiences like knowing what it feels like to have my culture celebrated in a major way, knowing what it feels like to live in a city where it seems like everybody looks just like you, they talk like you, they have experiences growing up very similar to yours, um, just different, you know, being able to put my kids in a school that was not predominantly black, but they're still not the only black kid in the classroom. Just, it's different, you know what I mean? It just was different, even in the workplace. It's just, I work with more black people um, at one job than I've ever worked with in my whole career living in Seattle. And so it's different and I liked it and it's been a good experience. Um, some of the things that I personally wanted to move to Georgia for were a cheaper cost of living because Seattle can be expensive. I wanted to move somewhere where the weather was better and I wanted to be around more people who look like me. And I've gotten all that. Outside of that, I wanted to have different um, career experience as well and to elevate. I wanted to be able to meet people and network people, network with people in corporate America and just build that like that sister bond that um, I figure would be a lot different than what I've been able to build in Seattle. And being able to have different experiences with dating because even if there are a lot of, you know, gay and lesbian people in Atlanta or even if the ratio to from men, women to men or women to men is more, you know what I'm talking about? There's more women in Atlanta than there's men. I've never had an issue with that. Never, ever, never, ever, never, ever. So don't let those things deter you, you know, if you are interested in moving to Atlanta. Some people want to move here because of the nightlife and the party scene and the black Hollywood and all that kind of stuff. Those were never, you know, anything of interest to me. I didn't care about that, but I definitely wanted to be around more people that look like me and just have different experiences. And then when I do want to do something outside of going to dinner and having a few drinks, if there's something for me to do concerts festivals just you know wine tasting just all kind of different things and experiences that i did not have the opportunity to experience in seattle and so for that i'm grateful um very grateful i, I will say that but i want something a little bit different you know there are some upsides to georgia living in georgia there are some downsides to living in georgia and i really think that you need to be at peace with yourself before you make a big jump to move to a city especially if you don't know anybody um one of the things that i really thought that i was going to um, experience when moving to georgia was like this big sisterhood you know what i mean like i thought that there was going to be so many different black women we're going to be able to network and build these bonds and have all these experiences and it's not necessarily like that at least that hasn't been my experience right um it could be a little competitive in every way when it comes to men when it comes to friendships the, the competition can be anywhere from education to what you're wearing, to what you're driving, to what kind of experience you have, to where you travel. The whole passport situation, I think the whole, do you have a passport is so corny to me. Oh, it's so corny to me, but it happens. Um, it just hasn't been my experience. My experience has been that it can be a little bit more clicky, um, which is cool. Pretty women don't necessarily want to hang out with other pretty women all the time because it could be a competition as far as um, the type of men that you date or that might be interested in them versus you or whatever the case may be. Um, a lot of people like to party and that's not my thing. People party professionally out here Monday through Sunday and that is just not my thing. So it can be a little bit different. You can find what you're looking for, but it will take time. And in between that time, you just have to be strong-willed and strong-minded and really have peace within yourself, be comfortable with your solitude, and really know what you're looking for because if there's any weak areas, you can easily get, you know, chewed up and spit out. When I kind of think about, you know, wanting to relocate to, um, to Atlanta back in the day, like in 2008, when it first piqued my interest, I really had pure intentions like there wasn't anything that was in my mind was reckless or for the wrong reasons of why I wanted to move. 
but I was younger then and I was definitely more naive. And so I could see things going very wrong just because I was naive and so many experiences were new. People are flashy out here. People do a lot of talking out here and there's nothing wrong with that. Some of their talking and some of the flashiness is valid. I don't be counting people's pockets, so I really don't give a damn because whatever people have going on with them is with them and ain't got shit to do with me, okay? But if you are in awe, like, oh my God, I can't believe this and that, you can get caught up. People can say you the dream and you can be in a lot of people's bullshit. What I have realized, even just being pure and just trying to have fun experiences is that some people are really not happy with themselves. Some people are living a facade and this is men or women and um sometimes those energies will cross over and they'll try to put that shit on you and that's just real that's not just atlanta that's anywhere but in atlanta where there's more black people and more black experiences and i'm running to these experiences a lot more within dating within corporate america and we're just in friendships and things like that more than what i would have had to run into it in seattle it comes at you a little bit quicker and a little bit faster and um people know how to how to play the game and how to work the system and i've had a few experiences not many but a few experiences where later on i looked back and i like this was just never my circle of people right but if i always have to attach myself to people and going out and doing things and dating men and all that kind of stuff i'm gonna have a lot of that drama in my life that i'm just not looking for growing up was rough I've had a lot of rough experiences just as a child, things that had nothing to do with me, but it was what I was born into. I've had, you know, my own rough experiences as a young adult because I was young and naive and learning and growing and thought I had all the fucking answers and I didn't. And so <laughs> there's been times where, you know, I definitely have had myself in situations that, you know, weren't the best. It's just growing, learning and growing. We've all done that. Um, and so now at this part of my life, being older, having two older children, I'm not interested in that. And um, a lot of people just aren't in that peace with themselves and aren't that place to where they can see and separate themselves from what is needed and what's not needed. Sometimes it's all about the fun, all about the experience. And me, I don't give a goddamn about the experience and about the fun. If it's not going to be peaceful, if it's not going to be healthy, I don't want to have no parts in it. And a lot of people are caught up in the fun. And so that just brings about a whole lot of bullshit. And it's not just with adults. It's not just with women. It's not just with men, not just in romance, not just in, you know, um, not just in like corporate America or friendships. It's a little bit of everywhere. Quite honestly, when I watch the news out here, which I watch the news almost every day, I see just a lot of things that even happen to our young kids because they're just a little bit all over the place. They just don't know, you know what I mean? And there's so many influences from different places. They're caught up in some things that just take their lives or it alters their lives permanently in one way or the other. It, there's just a lot. There's just a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. And so if you don't come from a city that moves like Atlanta, you really have to be peace at, at peace with yourself you have to be because if not you'll get sucked in not even intentionally and it can just change the trajectory of where you're trying to go and the things that you're trying to do so just be mindful of that anyway that's been my experience you know i've had like i said i've had some good experiences some good things happened you know i've been here for almost seven years but two years in i bought my first home had my first home for three years something that i probably would not have been able to accomplish um super quickly in seattle because the the market is just very different um i purchased a condo in the city and i was able to do that year two with a son that was graduating headed to college and another son that was going into high school and a single mom and i was able to do that but if i were in seattle the last time i was there and I actually looked at the market i remember them building new high-rise condos and the studio start out at eight hundred thousand dollars and so I never thought I was going to be able to own a home by myself um, and definitely not that soon. And I came here to Georgia, not even looking to do that. And I was able to make that accomplishment. I was able, also able to sell it. And now I'm interested in buying again. But once the market settles right now, I'm just renting. Um, I sold, I believe, at a good time. And so I'm just renting. But I'm waiting to get my foot back in the door and buy something again because it's possible. I don't know if it'll be here, though, because like I said, I'm looking to to move out of Georgia and do something different. But um, yeah, one more thing, too. 
please women please don't worry about the ratio of women to women to men please don't worry about the the lgbtq community and there's so many gay men and don't worry about that i have not had a problem since i've been in georgia um, with meeting a straight man with meeting a beautiful man with meeting a well-to-do man ever never to date I've never had that problem it's never been scarce for me it will not be scarce for you um I do think that when it comes to dating, and this probably is true in Seattle too, there's so many different influences on social media um, that it can make it a little bit harder to find somebody of quality. I will say that. But it's not hard to find somebody. It's not hard for people to find you. In Georgia, I have, I guess, been lucky enough to find men that I find attractive, very attractive, because I like beautiful ass men, um, that I find attractive. They're doing well, they're educated, they keep up with their bodies, they have a nice home, they're doing well in business, they might be entrepreneurs, they either have you know, a child or a couple of kids or they don't have any kids at all, they're fun, they like to travel, they're spontaneous, etc. I've never had a problem with finding that ever. What I have had a problem with is either finding that man that fits that criteria that is interested in one woman. It's funny because I've met a couple of men off of TV that I saw that were in Atlanta on TV. And I was like, oh, I, I would love to meet such and such. And then I get to Atlanta and I meet such and such and such and such is not who I thought he was going to be. You know what I mean? A lot of people are believing in polygamy. And I don't even know if they believe in it, but they're they're following it right now. My belief is, is that it's becoming popular, especially in the black community, because I think that sometimes women feel like they have to do these things in order to be able to keep a man, right? A lot of men want to um, share or have multiple women. And some women are okay with that. I've just never been okay with that. It's never been my thing. Even in Seattle, it's an absolute no. I barely like to share my food, baby. So there's no way I want to share my man. There's just no way. It's not happening for me, right? Um, but I've never had a problem. So it's either, you know, it's just going to take a little bit more time to find that man that's really better, ready to settle down with one woman. Or you're going to meet the man that's ready to settle down. He might be a lot older and he was the playboy back in the day, but then he's anxious. And so that's not something that I'm looking for either. That's kind of a turnoff for me because it makes me feel like you're not anxious for me. You're just anxious because you thought you met the next one. You understand? And that's never... I, I need to know I'm special. Not that you're just in a rush to find anybody special. I need to know that it's me. And so that's been a little bit different. But you can still meet plenty of people. You can still date, have different experiences, have fun, and just be open to a little bit of everything. And in time, when it's your time, it will always happen. So don't let that deter you because it has nothing to do with the LGBT community here at all. It has nothing to do with men being down low at all. There's still plenty out there for everybody. And when the time comes, it will come. It doesn't matter if you're in Georgia. Seattle, Texas, Florida, wherever. Um, he's going to be there and he's only going to be yours when the time comes. Okay. Anyway, I hope that that kind of summed up my experience um, of moving to Atlanta. Hopefully, you know, maybe in 2023, I'll be able to create a vlog about moving out of Atlanta, but only time will tell. Um, I'll probably be back um, sometime this week with another vlog. Um, I do want to give a little vlog about some skincare, some of my skincare finds and what has worked for me during the pandemic into 2023. Um, and so that's what I plan on, you know, having next. If you guys have any questions, leave them below give me your commentary below on how your christmas went what your plans are for new year's how your week is going so far and um all that good stuff so peace and love and, and all that good stuff and i will talk to you guys later